let's give this little beauty a, a, a rolled up my sleeves. He means business. <laughs> Well, hello there, perfect drafters. How are we doing? Are we good? Good. Right. We've got a perfect draft keg. Yeah. But also, I've got all sorts of paraphernalia. Paraphernalia? Paraphernalia. Paraphernalia. Stuff on me bar top. Because I've got a can. Yeah, I've got a can of what the keg is. So let's have a look at it. It is the Innocent Gun. That's the keg that's also in there. And this is the can of it. I thought with the Ghost Ship review that I did a couple of weeks ago, the bottle comparison to the keg, that was quite nice. It was quite good. I was absolutely blown away with how different that bottle was to that keg. I mean, you could literally see it on the video. When I was editing it and I was looking at those different colours, obviously I can see it when it's sitting here in front of me. But sometimes on a camera, that doesn't come through. It just doesn't. But when I was editing it, I could see that it did. And so could you. I had many a comment going, what? Look at that. There is a big difference. And believe me, there was a huge difference in taste. So I thought, look, I'm going to do a similar thing with this innocent gun. You're looking at, and I'm reading it off the tin, crisp, zesty, and refreshing. That's what we're looking at. I do like the design of the innocent gun tin. I do, it's good. Brewed with golden oats, crafted in the mighty Scotland. We're looking at 4.6% in the can, and that is exactly what it is in the keg. Worth re-emphasizing, because it's not always the case. Just have a look at the keg of Stella, and then a bottle of Stella in your Tesco's. It isn't always the case. So, I'm going to do a little comparison with that. And some people may have recalled that I've also done a review of this little beauty just here, the physics. And I've seen some narrative, I've seen some narrative? That sounds a bit cocky. I've seen some people saying, with how much cans and bottles can save you compared to perfect draft kegs now, with all the price increases, this is coming into its own because it's giving you that draft-like experience out of a can or a bottle. Hmm, is it? Is it really? Because what goes in a can pretty much comes out of a can. I said that in that review. It does add a little bit extra. It does. It just gives that little bit of a drafty kind of mouth feel. That's what it adds. Taste, pretty much the same. But to give this every chance, what I'm going to do is run this can through the physics. So then I'm going to compare it to the keg on the perfect draft. Yeah. So I'm not going to take all the credit for thinking of this because a certain Gary Sweeney on Twitter did tweet me and said, Boldy, I liked that ghost ship comparison. When you get round to doing Innocent Gun, try the can. So, cheers fella, nice tip. I said I will, and I am doing. So basically, first things first, yeah? How much? How much, son, for your keg? Well, £36.50. I ain't gonna go over all the situations with discount and keg returns. You can work it out now, perfect drafters. You know the score, yes you do. £36.50 for the keg though. And as for the cans, Oz in Metesco's, here's the picture. I always look good taking a little picture of their shelves. And on that shelf, it has an everyday low price. They do mean that, they've circled it, of £4.29 for your four cans. So there we go. And you're looking at, just for those people that do want to work it out, I ain't going to work it out for you this time, but you're looking at a 440 mil can. That's what you're looking at. I'm sure someone in the comments below can work out the 440 mil compared to the six litre keg. I'm just not gonna do it this time. I'm just not. I'm more worried about the taste. I'm gonna run it through this. I might leave a little bit in the can and I'll be a heathen, an absolute heathen and swig it out the can as well, just to see you know, what's the difference with that. But basically the majority is gonna go through this. I'm gonna do a pour through the keg 
and then I'm going to compare the two. So it is from the Innis and Gun Brewing Company, and that is in Edinburgh. And looking at the can, it's quite handy actually having the can because you can read the blurb of what the beer is meant to taste like. We're looking at Innis and Gun Lager Beer. It's carefully crafted with zesty, aromatic hops to be crisp, refreshing, and full of flavour. It is brewed with golden oats for a smooth, balanced finish. Best served cold. Right. So this has come out of my fridge. I know I'm handling it. I'm manhandling it. It's probably going to go everywhere. Yeah. Does anyone do this? Anyone? Settle down your can. Yeah. Don't know if it works. I always used to do that with a can of Coke when I was a kid. That settled it. Right. Let's get stuck into this, people. So here's that keg then, people. Look at them swirls. We've got golden swirls. We've got green swirls. We've got a lot of green. There's a lot of green there. Crafted in Scotland, brewed with golden oats. Lager, beer, crisp, zesty and refreshing. It's telling us everything we need to know, but is it telling us the truth? There's the keg, people. Now, let's do the pours. Right then, people. I'm gonna go in for the can first, in for that physics. Yeah, let's go for it. Let's see if I can remember how you do it. I think you twist it, there we go. There's a little pipe, a little pipe in there. That's where you have a bit of pipage. Did that before opening the can. Right, let's open this can. Settled that. <laughs> there we go. So it works with cans and bottles, this little beauty. Just got to pop that in there, Look, pop the straw in. Pop that in there. Simple as that. It is easy, this machine. It is easy. Right, let's give it a pour. So you go down, just standard like that for a start. I'll tell you what, this is basically a glass of foam. Glass of foam. I'm sure you do that, Dan. I'm sure you do. Gonna have to let that settle a bit. Look at that, that's lively, isn't it? Let's settle that just to the side, just for a second. Right, let's go for this. Listen to that horn. Look at her. It's very close, people, but it's looking nice. Looking good. Right. Be happy with that in a pub, wouldn't you? Anyway, let's have a look what the perfect draft innocent gun looks like close up. Let's have a look. Okay, so there we go. Look at that. Look at that foam head. That's beautiful, people. For those people, fast forward into this point, it's not a Stella. This is innocent gun. But a nice white foam head lovely golden amber colour, and look at them bobs. Never fails me, this glass, i tell you that right now. Never fails me. But yeah, that's, that's looking nice. I'm looking forward to that. Yeah, sweet as a nut. Let's just bring this in quickly. Yes, it has got a big old head, it has, but I'm gonna leave a bit in that can, because like I say, I just wanna sip it out the can, just for those people that haven't got one of these physics machines. But let's bring this in. So there we go, massive head. It's probably a bit of my fault. We have got some bubs. Got some bubs going there. And this Sani Mig glass is normally very good. It is. It's probably not quite as good as the uh, Stella Chalice, but yeah, look at that. It's looking all right, isn't it? A little bit lighter, I'd say. A little bit more clear than the, uh, than the draft. But uh, pretty similar. Certainly not the difference of what I saw in that ghost ship. Anyway. Let's have a go at the taste. Right, people, we've got them both poured. That's actually died down a little bit, so let me give it a tippy-toppy too. Right, obviously not a pint, 440 mil. So, there we go. Let's give this little beauty, I've, I've, I've rolled up my sleeves, he means business. Yes, he does. Right, here we go. So, started to, uh, you know, have a bit of head reducage. <laughs> but not bad. Nice clingage to the top of that glass. Yeah. I mean, just comparing the colours there, just comparing those, that's definitely lighter. You know what I mean? The, um, the can here, the can, look at those. When you put them side by side, you know, this, this is a lot darker amber than this kind of gold clear colour. Very clear though, that. 
very clear. Right. Equal bobbage. Bobbage. Innis and gone. Let's give him a go. Cheers, perfect drafters. Pretty smooth, actually. Pretty smooth. Nice. I'm liking that. Yeah, you know, a nice multi taste to it. It has got that bit of zestiness to it. Bit of a lemon zest, and I like it. Makes it a very smooth, kind of easy drinker. That's a session beer, and it's not going to offend anyone. It really ain't. Right. I'm liking that. I'm thinking of the other lagers, obviously, on the perfect draft. Stella kind of jumped straight to mine as one of my faves. Absolute beauty. A fail safe keg. But that, I would say. Yeah, it's not quite as punchy as Stella, you can tell. It's not quite got the ABV there, but it's still a nice, refreshing, good lager. No bad aftertaste whatsoever. Very nice mouthfeel. Good carbonation. Good clingage. Look at that. Good clingage. Happily down a few of those. Happily giving it to my mates. You know, not because I want them to down it, but because I want them to have a pleasant drink as well. Why not? Let's see how it compares to the can. From the physics, right. So the head has dropped a bit, but you can see obviously a bit of clingage. I gave that some proper foamage on top there. But anyway, bubs, there's not too many bubs, considering, considering it's from a can, normally you get some more, but anyway, let's give it a go. Cheers, people. Not awful, but it's thinner. So much thinner. That has not added thickness to it. I don't know if it's added thickness compared to out the can, but if it has, it's like a marginal bit of thickness. Yeah, massive difference again. Thin. I think, I think that's the only word for it. The actual taste, very similar. It is, it is similar. You do get a little bit of that zestiness there. It's not like the ghost ship. I think that bottle of ghost ship was skunked. It was, it was bad. It was off. It was bad. If you buy that can and you think that's nice, that's pleasant, then get the keg because you will love it. You will. Because if you think that's okay, you'll think that's very nice. Right. Let's see if there is a bit of, bit of dreggage in the tin. Why not? Gonna be a heathen. Fire it down like I'm on a train. <laughs> Cheers. Let's have a go. There's a bit left in there. It hasn't made that much difference. Probably a little bit. Yeah. Hard to sell. Hard to sell. Probably a little bit less draftage quality again. But, you know, that's the order it goes in. Without a shadow of a doubt. You know, straight out of the tin. Then the old physics. Then the draft. I'll grade them in a mo, but let me open up some Craxels pretzel pieces and have some snackage. I've had some Craxels pretzel pieces before, but these are the honey and mustard onion ones. So again, just like the Snyder's jalapeno jobos, Snyder's also had honey and mustard onion flavored pretzel pieces. So they've obviously looked at what Snyder's did and said, let's just copy them. Let's go for it. So let's give these a try. There's two other flavors, ones I haven't tried. Hot buffalo wings, which I'd love to give a go, and sweet corn, which I wouldn't like to give a go. I do remember there's no blurbage, so I'm not even gonna look. They're from the Netherlands, that'll do. Right, flavored hard pretzel pieces. Let's crack them open. Let's tip a few out. Here we go. I didn't give it a snifty, did I? Let's give it a snifty. Smelling all right. I do like mustard, yeah. I mean, my heritage comes from a place of pies. And with said pie, I do like a Walker's fluted pork pie. That's what I'm talking about. Some people say the Dickinson and Morris pork pie is better. They're both made from the same place. Don't know why I'm banging on about pies, but basically with said pie, I do like a bit of mustard. I do. 
if I've not got, you know, like red onion chutney or something like that to fire with my pie, I'll have some Coleman's mustard from Norwich. Uh-huh. Let's go for the Craxels pretzel pieces, honey and mustard and onion flavour. Not bad. Not bad at all. I mean, they're never going to be Snyder's. Nothing is. Nothing. I think just as with Snyder's, the jalapeno pretzel pieces are the top notch flavour. And they are with these Craxels as well. Those honey and mustard are okay. They're not bad. They're a good beer snack. That's what I'll say for them. But they're not overpowering. You know, I expected a bit more of a, a punch with the mustard. That punch ain't there. But it is honey mustard, I guess. Um, and a bit of onion there as well. I like the crunch of them. The crunch of them are very nice. They are good. They haven't got so much of an oily texture as the Snyder's, but I actually like that about the Snyder's. Those are a bit drier. Probably slightly bigger pretzel pieces. Nice crunch though, good dryage of the mouth, nice flavour, just could do with a bit more punch. I'd have them, I will have them, and yeah, I'd be happy with them. Let's see how they go with the sippy suppy sue. Let's do some ratings, people. So, the can. If we was going straight out of the can with this innocent gun, it's not awful, it's really not. I think my favourite canned lager, if I had to pick one, is Cronenberg 1664. That's what I'd pick. People are probably going to slate me for that, but that is what I'd pick. If i just got to have a can right, of lager. That, out of 10, I'd give it a 6. It's not bad. Not bad. Coming out of the physics, it's not made a massive difference, certainly not to the taste. Um, just slight kind of hint of draft kind of mouth feel to it. And that's what that does. In all honesty, that is what that does. So I'm going to give that a seven out of there, out of the physics. Perfectly drinkable. Totally different to that ghost ship out of the bottle because I don't even think that was drinkable. That's what I'm saying. That, drinkable. So I'm giving that a seven. This, I'm giving that an 8.5. Now, that is a good score. I always recall eight for the spate, for spaten. I'm actually saying I prefer that to spaten, which is a big call. It is. So I don't think it's quite up there with Stella. I still would put Stella above it. I don't think it's up there with a Hasroder. I think Hasroad is above it. It's definitely beaten a Golden Goose, without a shadow of a doubt, or a Lefe Lalagra. So those are down there. They're below it. Done. It's not up there with a Hertog or a Jupiler. Those are also above it. That's what I'm saying. That's where I'm putting it. That's my positioning amongst the perfect draft kegs. That's what I'm saying, perfect drafters. I'm going to have a few more of those, because why not? Yeah? Because I've got to finish those cracks or pretzel pieces. I don't want them to go soft. It would be rude to make them go soft. Please do like and subscribe. It always helps. There'll be more Perfect Draft keg reviews coming up. Yes, there will. And yeah, I will pull that baby out as well. You know, and if you can't see it, I'm talking about the Krupp sub. I do want to get a few talks on the go as well. Christmas is around the corner, people. And Christmas means I may have one or two more tipples. <laughs> so, there we go. Have an absolute belt for a weekend, Perfect Drafters. Whatever you're doing, have a beauty. But for now, cheers. Have a good one. Cheers.